And over here, this guy across the we don't focus on. Okay, we have 2004 part A done, 2001 part B done. Uh, Ivan, shh, just painting why he has to stay applied. Um, we don't have time to do all five, so I'm going to skip these two and just do the very last one, 1992. And that'll be the last question I'll do on body and carries on. So if you're working ahead, you're going to start on the shortest distance questions, and you'll have about three or four of these to do for the next one. So probably down to 02 part A but I'll review that just before the end of the class. So I'm jumping down to the last question, 1992. So away we go, and uh, give me someone here. Kieran, you have started this, so you want to help us out here. An airplane having a speed of 500 kilometers per hour in still air. What's the first thing I write down? Uh, okay, V or VP is velocity of the plane. So is it the velocity of the plane? Because it says in still air, is it the velocity of the plane? No, it's 500? Because you come back to here, if you can focus on this, Andrew, various ways of announcing VBC, body and carrier, the velocity of the body is still there. So as soon as you see that, you know it's VBC, or in our case, velocity of the plane relative to the wind equals 500. Those would have to be learned off. Uh, in still air, travels 1, 1,500 kilometers due north. So from there to there, and if it doesn't give it anything, I'll give it something, I'll call it P and Q. So it wants to go from P to Q. So if that's what it finishes up doing here on, what am I going to call it? Uh, VP. VP. Okay, after it takes the wind into account. So that's what it wants to do. It starts off at 500. So we probably find out something about the wind. When the wind is blowing from 60 degrees east of north. It's a bit of a mouthful, so we draw our axis. 60 degrees east of north. There's north. 60 degrees east of north is over here somewhere. That's 45 degrees, so 60 degrees east of north is there. Let's make it a bit more obvious that it's below 45. So it's blowing from that direction, which means it's blowing in this direction over there. So in fact, I'll redraw that over here somewhere. So it's blowing... Going in that direction there, where this angle here is 30 degrees. Well, it's going to be from 60 degrees east of north. Yeah, that's 60 degrees east of north. So, therefore, this guy here is 30 degrees and it's blowing in that direction. So, I can now get rid of all of this. And that's the velocity of the wind, and that's blowing at 30 degrees. So what else does it tell me about it? At 90 kilometers per hour, VW equals 90. So it's beginning to look very similar to the other couple of questions that we did. Okay? Wind is going in that direction, Kieran. Where do I have to start? I'm going from P to Q. That's the point B, and I think you're going to Q. To the right or to the left? To the right. To the right. So basically, if I start off here somewhere, the wind is going to blow me away from it altogether. So it's got to be here. And I keep going until this completes the triangle. So as strange as it may seem, Kieran, yeah, all the way up there. I redraw my Q there out of the way. I redraw my VP here out of the way. And it's somewhere up. In fact, it's over like that, so I didn't need to come up this far at all. That's only going to be 30 degrees. So that's it there. So velocity, so what's this guy here going to be? And uh, what do I call it? VP? VPW is 500. And this is the velocity of the wind. And we know that the velocity of the wind is 90. In fact, we won't have time to do an awful lot more than this, but we just want to be careful with our angles. What do I know about my angles now? The one IQ is Okay. Uh, the only thing we know about angles is to do with the velocity of the wind. So I look at the velocity of the wind. I likely put in an axis on both parts. And do I know an angle at the top or at the bottom? I know that guy there is 30, I know this guy here is 90, so as you said, the whole angle there is 120 degrees. Two pieces of information and an included angle, I can get anything else I want. To go back to the question, it's looking for a direction in which the airplane must travel on the outward. So if it's looking for a direction, that's what it starts off doing, so I want to know the angle in relation to the x-axis, so it's theta that I'm looking for. And away we go one more time. Ideally, I'd like to use the sine rule. Uh, Kieran, what did you do here? Uh, 
Yeah, I didn't sign up. Okay, so if I call this guy here, uh, Beta, I may or may not be able to work out Beta. So what did you do, Kieran? Uh, still kind of like one bit over sine Yep. Equals 90 over sine beta. Equals 90? Over sine beta. Oh yeah, that 90 there. And from that you worked out that beta equals? A.97 degrees, or in relation to the x-axis, theta is equal to, what would it be? Uh, 80, 0.03 degrees. So the first part of the question is the time it would take on the outward journey, or the angle it takes on the outward journey, answer 81.03 degrees. So is it wrong to say, say uh, north 8.97 degrees east, or should you really just say east 81.03 degrees? You get the marks for all of them. Once you put that notation in there, and the notation is correct, then it doesn't matter which way you put it. Okay? So you're still recording, so we'll draw the diagram, we just get time to draw the diagram on the way back. We started off. P, Q, this time it's going back from Q to P. My velocity of the wind is still the same. That was 30 degrees. Velocity of the wind was equal to, was it 90? The velocity it started out at V, W was still 500. So nice and quickly, we're just going to draw a diagram. Wind is blowing in that direction. VP and VPW both start from the same point. So they're both starting from up here. Okay. So the question is, where do I put my VPW? Um, Down here? Yeah. No, that's the way the wind's... Oh, I'm trying to... So you can go the opposite way. Yeah, as you think about it, I often get it wrong too. You, you put it down here and then you think, hang on, if it starts off here and the wind is going that way, it's never going to get back. So by default, it's somewhere over here. And then you decide how far down. Well, keep going down until what? As far as the, you can join the wind. Until I can stick this guy back up here. So I know I'll be sticking that up here somewhere. So therefore, this is going to keep going down to there. So now I just got to put my notation in. What's this guy here going to be called? BP. That's what it does after the wind, this guy. BPW. Equals 500. 500. And this is BW. equals 90. Once again, I'm going to be looking for an angle, ideally with the x-axis. So we'll call this guy here theta. Mm -hmm. But to get that, I might have to work out what beta is there. So where do I go, Shane? Um, go inside. I'm not sure. Well, if I call this guy here alpha, like the bell is gone, we just finish this off. I can say 90 over sine beta. Oh, yeah, just not the sign. Is equal to 500 mm -hmm. over sine alpha. Yeah. You know what alpha I is? I know one of these guys is. Oh, yeah, that's what I can put in. I know this guy here is what? 60. So that's my target. So that guy there is 60 degrees. So sine alpha is the sine of 60 degrees. That means I work out what sine beta is. And if I work out what beta is, I can work out what theta is. So that's its angle on the way back. And just to very quickly to say the total time taken, well, on the way out, you can say velocity is distance over time. So you're looking for the total time taken. Do I know the total distance? Yes. I do. I know my distance is 1500. So I know it's 1500 going out, and I know my velocity going out, therefore I can get my time going out. I know it's 1500 on my way back, and I can get my velocity on the way back, therefore I can work out my time on the way back. How will I work out my velocity out and back? How would I get a value here, Ross, for velocity? Andrew, you're paying attention. How do you get a value for velocity? Um, sine rule when you get the angle. Okay, yeah, just use the sine rule another time to get an angle for the velocity. So I know the distance in both cases. To work out the velocity in both cases, I just go back to my triangle and use the sine rule again. Okay? That's pretty much all there is to it. What they want us to do is find the total time taken. If there was no wind blowing, what would happen? It'd just be straight, 500. It'd just be straight up and straight down. Its velocity would be what its velocity is what it started out at and its distance would be the distance between these two. So basically, it would just be a straight up and a straight down. That's all there is to it. Okay, cut it off. Thank you, Andrew.